Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands, and today we'll be uh, working on the old uh, X3 there. Well, it's not an old X3, it's pretty new, but uh, belongs to Elvis Stoico there. He was pretty happy with the job we did on his uh, Can-Am, the 850 there with the tracks, you know, fixing the motor up on that. He's been using it, plowing with it, says she works great, so he figured he'd bring down his uh, new side-by-side -side and have a few things... Uh, changed on it just to help him out there so uh, let's take a look we'll show you what we're going to be doing now this thing right here is wicked I mean it looks awesome it's a 2021 Can-Am Maverick X3. I mean, this thing is brand spanking new. Uh, it, I can't get over the size of the shocks on this thing. They're bigger than the F-250, but uh, it's awesome. It's a, I can't get over how awesome this thing is. It's a little bit better than the Viking, maybe. I guess, I don't know. I love my Viking, but... Uh, I'd probably cheat on it with this one here. <laughs> it's turbocharged. I think, I don't know what these things are, like 170 or 190 horsepower or something stupid like that. Like, a lot of fun can be had with that. And uh, she's a good looking rig. I like how, you know, they got the grill matching the seats and the stickers, you know, kind of nice little accents. It's got the 29 Maxxis Big, Big Horn 2.0s. They're uh, nice tires there. Man, nice power plant in there, horsepower. So what we're gonna be doing with this one here is uh, he wants, uh, it's got some uh, heat advisor plugs. We're gonna be wiring into a center console there so he can plug his helmets in for him and his passenger. And then uh, he's changed the seats up a little bit. He put the harnesses in and then raised up the seat a little bit. So now, we got to move these, make up a bracket. We're going to relocate these guys up here somewhere to keep it straighter for the seat and then lengthen it because when you put these harnesses on, these are at the top of your shoulder and you want them down on your chest and we got to be able to lower the buckle down to the mid waist anyway. It's up a little bit too high on them. So we'll get that all switched around and then uh, he's got the quick release column on here. But uh, the tilt on it, it's not going up as high as uh, it used to after he put that in there. So we're going to, so obviously something, there's a clearance issue in there. It's hitting against something. So we'll find that, massage that out so that lifts up a little bit higher. Gives him a little more leg room anyway. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, check her out. And then maybe, just maybe, he'll let us uh, rip it a little bit. You know, get the full experience of this bad boy. But, uh, you know, could line it up next to the Viking. I mean, I don't think that thing stands a chance. The Viking's pretty awesome, but uh, <laughs> who knows? It, it might win in a drag race. All right, so the first thing that we did is pulled this top panel out here. Just pulled a few of the, there's only a few screws that hold it in. I had to pull the uh, little windshield off just to lift this panel up out of the way and then down in here where Elvis put the uh, column in, there was a little bit of a stamp bracket that was just hitting the edge there. So now I removed that little bit of material and it goes up all the way like you want it. So that's a bit of a bonus. And then we uh, unhooked the uh, harness. They were uh, bolted here and here on these little tiny little stamp brackets, but they're too low now because uh, Elvis has lift the seat up in here so what I did was uh, I had this big solid chunk of aluminum just laying around so I went over and saw the boys over at Alfab in town here had them uh, give that a little bend I mocked it up so it should work pretty good we're just gonna slot it in there gives it a nice uh, angle up we can remount the uh, harness up here, and then uh, it should be good. It'll uh, 
lengthen those straps for Elvis. Should put them where he wants them. So now all we got to do is uh, dress this guy up. We'll probably paint it to match the seats and the uh, stickers and whatnot. So it looks good too. And after a quick little coat of paint and a nice sticker from yours truly, there's a new seatbelt bracket fabbed up. Now we just got a bolter in. Matches the uh, interior, the stickers, and the grill. Nice one. And there's the bracket all installed. Looking good. Looks like it belongs there. Nice one. All right, so Elvis wanted me to double check his alignment here. He's got the uh, new column with the quick release steering wheel. He uh, put some upgraded uh, tie rod ends on it, but uh, I think there's something a little askew with the alignment. He wants, wanted me to straighten up the steering wheel, but I think we need to straighten up the actual wheels. Take a look at this. All right, so steering wheel is straight. I've got this uh, aluminum square tubing. It's pretty true, pretty straight stuff. So just as a quick guide, hold it up against the <laughs> edges of the wheel and that steering wheel's straight, but this wheel is not. So we gotta set the toe and uh, we'll uh, get this tweaked in. We'll take a quick look at the other side as well. Just do the same thing halfway up on the tire, just holding it on there. And I think you can see that that's a little bit out. So it's a good thing you brought it here. We'll uh, adjust these tire rods to get it tracking nice and straight and handling good. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so to correct Elvis's alignment issue, we're going to crack loose, jam nut on that side of the tie rod. And same thing over here. We'll crack that guy loose and then we'll be able to uh, just adjust that guy out until we get the wheel straight. And we'll do the uh, same thing on the other side and we'll get this alignment dialed in so she tracks straight, steering wheel straight, and go fast. All right, so got the jam nuts uh, cracked loose on the uh, tie rod in there. Got Connor inside, he's going to make sure the steering wheel stays nice and straight. We're going to uh, give it a bit of adjustment and as you can see, like I showed before, that's running towed way out. I mean that bar is about hitting the body there and she's running way off to the left so we'll give her some turns. So the eyeball it looks pretty good. We'll try the other side. All right, so same thing on this side. Connor's still inside holding the steering wheel straight in the way that this one is right now. We've adjusted that side by the eyeball. It looks good. But this one, same thing. It's towed way out. So we'll give her a couple of turns. All I'm trying to do is line up the bar to the back wheel once it looks fairly parallel. Go side to side with it. And straight. See here. Steering wheel straight. That looks nice. That looks nice. I think that's 
about ready for a test drive. We can just roll her back and forth and make sure the steering wheel is actually straight when you're holding it. And if it is, we'll lock her in and call her golden. All right, so we've adjusted or made the bracket to lengthen the position for his uh, harness. So that's one thing done. A uh, clearance for the tilt column so it goes up uh, a little bit further out of the way for his legs getting in and out. So that one's done. We've tweaked the alignment, set that so it's running uh, a lot more true, you know, nice and straight. Although I took it for a little bit of a test drive and I don't really think there's much point in setting the alignment because that thing's sideways all the time. That thing's awesome. So now the uh, only thing left on his list was I got to hook up two heat advisor uh, cords. He wants me to. Uh, We'll probably put them in this section here. We'll drill a couple holes. We'll have them so you can just plug right into there. So, I guess, look at these seats. These are factory seats. They're just wicked looking. So, we got to pull this one out because apparently in that center console on this side, remove the side panel, there should be accessory plugs that we can just uh, patch the cords to instead of wiring them right to the battery. So... We will pull this guy out. Now, apparently, these seats are pretty simple to come out. You just flap it up and it's got a little rubber stopper thing there. And you just pull that bottom cushion of the seat out. And then I'm guessing there's two bolts one down in that hole, one down there. I'll pull them out, and I think this whole seat is gonna pivot and give me access to there. I'm not 100% sure. We'll uh, try it and see. Let's uh, see what happens here. There's one. There's two. Is the seatbelt going to go with it? And, uh, yeah, not so much. That's, uh, that's hitting the ceiling right there. So, looks like I got to pull that one and that one. And then, uh, yeah, figure out uh, what's going on with the seatbelt, too. <laughs> okay. Alright, so I did have to take off the two nuts at the back and then I had to pull out the two through bolts at the front there and I just lifted the whole seat out. I undid the seat belt off of the right side of it too there and just pulled the whole thing out. I guess the easiest way apparently behind this panel is the access for plugging in those uh, Heater patch cord, so we'll take that panel off and, uh, yeah, see if we can find it. All right, so that panel and the front panel, they just pop in there, so we just gave them a little tug and they popped right off. There is an accessory power bar here, but we're not wiring to that. But this is, we do have access to it here from underneath now, so we are going to be putting both outlets right into there. Looking at the uh, cords, <laughs> they have plugs on them, so you would assume these are straight from BRP, so you would think they're plug and play. Look for instructions, and uh, they don't even give you instructions anymore. You gotta go <laughs> on the internet to their site here and uh, punch in the part number for what you're looking for, and then you get the instructions from there. So, from reading the instructions, they say that under the dash, somewhere, is an accessory wire cord. So, shine the light up there. And they say, it's got a white plug on it and it's attached to the main tube or close to the wiring harness and I think that's it right there. So we'll dig that sucker out, pull that white, uh, cap off 
We'll plug those two other harnesses into each other and then uh, plug it into here and hopefully we have working heat advisor plugs. Nice one. All right, those cords are all patched in. We got the seat back in. This is where we put them. They even give you a nice little helmet stickers to put on top of the lids there, but uh, nice and convenient location. Should be out of the way. We got Elvis's uh, helmet and cord in here. So turn the accessory on, plug her in. That one works. Try the other one. That one works. Lights on, so visor is heating. Nice clean little insta installation. The instructions, even though you got to go online to uh, get them, it's a little bit, uh, I guess it's the way most companies are doing it now. You do cheaper to do that than to print out the instructions. But uh, once I found that uh, plug up underneath the uh, dash there, it wasn't too bad. You just plug the two harnesses together. You put the plug it right into the dash there. Everything's all pre-wired. Zip tie and, you know, clamp the wires out of the way and good to go. Now I think we should uh, test drive it. Now the first time I did try and uh, move this a little test drive just to double check the alignment, I was like, I was pretty disappointed. Was, this thing's terrible. It was, uh, wouldn't give me any power. It wasn't moving right. And then I noticed on the, uh, nice dash there it was saying seat belt to me apparently on these if you do not have the seat belt buckled it will not uh, go anywhere well not fast anyway as soon as i clipped that seat belt on my eyes went as big as saucer plates this thing was awesome <laughs> you could hear the blow off valve chirping behind your ear the tires were just breaking free the thing's sideways all over the place so i liked it so much we should try it again I gotta say, it was a pleasure working on Elvis's brand new Maverick, and I think the real pleasure was uh, getting to test ride it there a little bit. Now, I had a 2011 Polaris Ranger 800 a few years back, and I thought it was pretty wicked until I drove this. This thing is insane. I mean, with the turbo, you hear the blow off valve going, this thing, it's like almost 200 horsepower stock, and you know it, because it rips, man. So, uh, I'm not going to beat on it too hard. It is Elvis's. It is brand new. So, without his permission to do any more, I don't really want to. Maybe we'll get him over and we'll get a few shots of him ripping it. See how he owns it. But, uh, yeah, fantastic machine. You know, I'm pretty impressed with it. The, the layout of it, the styling of it. You know, it's, uh, it's a pretty wicked piece of machinery. So, uh, hopefully, uh, we can get Elvis here to... Uh, some good ripping. Take it easy. Perfect. Very good. So what do you think? I think it's awesome. Um, for a short little guy like me, these uh, restraints were got short really quick. <laughs> they work great, they're just short, and you did an amazing job on this. This looks mint. I mean, it looks like right out of factory, but put a little plate in here um to extend it for us short guys <laughs> and uh it works great so it added it, at least there had to be at least six inches extra yeah it, which is great for me um i love these restraints awesome um 
I want to do a shout out to Hess uh, Motorsports down in Texas. Great company. Um, I've got uh, a two to one steering quickener on this thing that we needed to adjust a little bit because it wasn't allowing the tilt to go all the way up. So Pete was able to set that up and, and now it goes full and uh, it's amazing. I also got um, a steering rack support on the front from Hess as well. Uh, in the front there, S3 tie rods to kind of get that going and uh, make sure the front is uh, a little bit stiffer. We're gonna add a few more things. We're gonna tune this thing up pretty good. <laughs> got some ideas and stuff. Uh, but no, I'm really pumped to get out and do some riding and uh, yeah, do some more, uh, a few more tricks up our sleeve. <laughs> yeah, always. Nice one. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for tuning in to this episode. Uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to work on Elvis's stuff, and I'm glad he's happy with the job that we did here. You know, we try to, we aim to please anyway. And uh, getting my hands on a brand new uh, Maverick, I'm not going to complain about that <laughs> one bit, you know. I did do one donut, maybe two in the driveway. Sorry, baby. Oh, good. You guys, it's, it's great. How can you not help yourself? Until he figured out that you can only go, was it 15 kilometers yeah. an hour without the seatbelt in? So you click the seatbelt, he got all the power. Canadian company, they're always thinking safety. Hey, make sure he's got the seatbelt on before he goes running around. Exactly. <laughs> right. no, I love it. It worked out great. It's, uh, you know, I'm happy. This machine's an absolute monster. Yeah, it's you a know. monster. And that's only with 195 horsepower. When we get it up to 225? At least. Oh. Yeah, we'll have some fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be skating. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, you know, turn the notification bell on, hit the like button, and uh, leave a comment. Take her easy. Take care, guys. Take her easy.